about hundred thousand dollars that I'm looking to leverage to start my trading. How much am I going to make? How much can you afford to live? Have you thought that through? Is it your only hundred thousand dollars? It shouldn't be. So let's start there. Like you have to. At some point, you have to set aside capital that you want to speculate to drive income from, but it shouldn't be your last fifty thousand or your last hundred thousand dollars. So that that creates a quandary of how do I get there? Well, you got to work hard and whatever you're doing, save your money before you should even begin to trade. And that turns a lot of people off, but that's the reality. If you don't have money to lose, then you should not trade. And so what do I mean by that? So when I, people always say, how much money can I make? I'm like, and I always respond, how much money can you afford to lose? And if I hear people say, I can't afford to lose any, then I just tell them that this isn't the business for you because you're going to lose. You're going to have days where you don't make money. You're going to have weeks where you may not. You may have a month. If you're expecting a paycheck every day, this isn't that type of job. Oftentimes, many years with low volatility, you might make 80% of your money and 20% of the time. So the majority of your year is spent waiting. Patience is a part of this game, waiting, sitting for the opportunities when there is not movement. You can't make money if nothing is moving. So when people talk about volatility, I'm gonna get into this a little bit. Volatil volatility is a measure Depends on what, how they're using the term, but it's generally a measurement of how things are moving. So the bigger the number, the more volatility, the less, lesser the number, the least amount of volatility. In the past few years, we've been in a low, low volatility environment. And, just sit over there. And what, thanks, so. And, and what we're trying to what we're trying to do is provide you with opportunities and situations where the volatility may be low, but there are days when it comes and goes. So, how much can you afford to lose? You should start there. And if I had a hundred thousand dollars and it was not my last hundred thousand dollars, I would say, you know, I'm prob probably willing to risk thirty to forty percent ultimately. And then I'm wrong, and then I'm stopping. That doesn't mean in one time, however. So to lose 30 or 40 percent, I'm going to have to do that in probably 15 to 20 chunks. So I'm going to lose anywhere. You know, I always tell people anywhere from one to three percent of my capital would be the most I would risk on any idea. So if I have hundred thousand dollars, one to three percent translates into one to three thousand dollars. So that means if I uh, buy a contract and I and we work out the math and I lose a thousand dollars and that's the number I've set on, I should stop trading there and move on to the next trade. So it really comes down to, again, process. How do you figure out, and you should work that backwards, how much can you afford to lose? And then play with a smaller piece of that larger number multiple times. In other words, if you have a process, you're not gonna lose 20 times in a row. And if you do, you need to stop. Again, have an ultimate hard stop in this business. You have to have a reason to behave, you have to have a reason to take the risk. And the risk is the only thing that ultimately that you can define. So you have to be able to define that risk before you get into a trade. If you can't define, I always tell people, I know as soon as I take the trade where I'm wrong. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, I accepted the loss as soon as I take the trade. If you can't do that, you'll never be able to trade. I can tell you that that has probably been the biggest boon, like that was the biggest adjustment, adjustment for me was when I got to the point where I said, as soon as I got into a trade and my risk was $2,000, it changed the way that I looked at the markets. It changed the way that I looked at my entries. Because sometimes I would just say, you know what, that trade's not that good. If, if it's right there, then I'm going to lose $2,000. And that also plays into the sizing of the position. And we'll talk about that in many more videos. But if you don't have the sizing right because your risk is not known, you'll never succeed. So it really comes down to, to answer your question, how much are you willing to lose? If you can answer that question, the profits will take care of themselves. And that's a really simple, it's not a trite thing to say, but you really have to define how much you're willing to risk before you can make anything. Hey, thanks again for participating here at the uh, five minute trader. If you'd like, to learn more and have an hour of time to spend with us, 
click the button on the website. If you'd like to spend a day with us, we have that offering also. And as always, we thank you here at the 5 Minute Trader for being involved, for wanting to learn. We're grateful for your business. And any questions that you may have, send them our way. And uh, we'll be happy to answer all and any questions over uh, the life cycle of the 5 Minute Trader. Peace, have a great day, and have a safe weekend out there.